you. Life must be miserable for everyone in a zombie apocalypse. But teenagers would have it particularly tough. Just imagine how depressing it would be. You want to have fun, experience all the goofy joy out there, but the adults are just talking about survival this and survival that. Left Behind examines this bleak existence. We see the world through the eyes of Ellie and better understand what it would be like to live in a place where undead monsters are the norm. Left Behind is a prequel to The Last of Us. We're introduced to Ellie years before she meets Joel, and we see how she grew from naive kid to hardened survivor. Her companion is Riley. She's slightly older than Ellie, and though they had a falling out a month earlier, they've put past grievances behind them. Who wants to hold a grudge when there's an exciting world to explore? So you two set out to an abandoned mall, because that's where every teenager hangs out. There's an easy back and forth between these two friends that's very different from the dialogue in The Last of Us. Sullen, angry Joel smothered Ellie's enthusiasm, whereas Riley shares in it. Their sheer delight in their giddy exchanges, so much so that I was laughing right along with them. It's so pure and genuine that I didn't want their silly conversations to end. So... so. Of course, it has to end. Happiness isn't allowed to thrive in zombie stories, after all. Interspersed between the scenes with Riley and Ellie having fun are dangerous encounters years in the future. Here, Ellie has already met Joel, though she's at a point where she must fend for herself. The mood is very different than it is in the other moments. There's no time for jokes. There's no time for levity. It's bleak and sad and all too real. The jarring mood swings between these two sections greatly affected me. I was so used to the playful atmosphere that having to face the truth was too much to bear. I just wanted to spend time goofing off with Riley and Ellie. That's the beauty of Left Behind, though. It doesn't hide from reality. Ellie has to grow up at some point, and though it hurt to see her hardened, it's for the best. She wouldn't be able to survive otherwise. When you're with Riley, there's not much in the way of traditional action. Instead, exploration is the focus. Whether you're looking around in a Halloween store or snapping photos at a booth, Every moment is meant to give new insight into these characters. Such deliberate pacing really welcomed me into this difficult world. Everything shifts when you're alone with Ellie. Here there are real threats. Infected and mercenaries are trying to kill you. So character building is established through combat encounters rather than conversation. Ellie is fierce and determined, but she's not stupid. Avoiding a fight is obviously much smarter than trying to be a hero and ending up bitten. And so sneaking is the wisest option. I made friends with shadows, used bottles as a distraction, and did my best to keep her out of harm's way. Unfortunately, the last fight forces you to kill enemies. With no infected nearby, I was sure I'd be able to enter a locked door, but the game wouldn't allow it. I had to kill every last monster. It felt like it was pushing me to do something opposed to Ellie's will, and that made me feel dirty. Still, the combat is tense and rewarding. The brutality of The Last of Us is presented here, though there is a wrinkle thrown in. Mercs and Infected now mix, and you can get the two sides to attack one another. Seeing the people hunting me torn to shreds was satisfying, more than I'd like to admit, so this was a great addition. Left Behind is a huge success. Not only does it borrow some of the best elements of The Last of Us, but it also forges its own path, one that's very powerful. The mood is so different without Joel around that I was absorbed in ways that the main game seemed to block me out. Left Behind is an excellent addition to this series that gives further insight to this terrible world and its most fascinating character. Oh, nice!